Hey guys. Hey. Hey Justin. Glad to be having this little conversation with you. Justin Taylor. Colin Hansen. Owen Strand. Owen, you want to kick us off here with this conversation? Yeah. Um, so we've been thinking some, I know, on our own about evangelical movements and tensions within evangelicalism as um, a collection of movements, mm -hmm. how denominations fit in. Um, is is evangelicalism based on a cult of personality? Is it not? You know, these tensions. So I just want to throw it out to you guys. What historical observations, theological observations do you have about this sort of thing? Um, either one of you, just jump in. Well, I think when you think about historically evangelicalism as a movement, often the story is told based on larger-than-life personalities. You have Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield and John Wesley, Charles Finney, and on and on it goes through our own day with Billy Graham and uh, Rick Warren and others. And so the story is often told a movement um, coalescing around different people at different times. So I think that's a pretty standard his, uh, part of the history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I mean <clears throat> we're seeing that manifested today. We all want to stay away from I am of Paul and I am of Cephas, I am of Paulus, but um, even in a sanctified sense, we're still I'm of John Piper, I'm of Mark Dever, I'm of Mark Driscoll, I'm of yeah. Joel Osteen or Bill Hybels yeah. or Rick Warren. It's still a very personality-driven movement. And I think a lot of us can think that's just a bad thing. I think it can be a good thing, but in something with dangers, too. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's different ways you can address that issue. You can say, I'm not going to buy into this at all. I'm totally isolated from, from this kind of personality-driven evangelicalism. And we can think of scholars and leaders who have taken that approach. Then there's a kind of mediating position. It's not great to be so personality driven, but I'm going to kind of use that for the, right. for good, for, for the gospel right. and God's glory as much as I can. And then there's the kind of um, wholesale, you know, I am going to all the way, you know, market myself as a personality and yeah, for good, but, um, but I'm embracing, I'm really embracing this personality of leader and charismatic figure. So what do you do then when you recognize, looking historically, that movements inevitably rise and fall? And if we're in the middle of a time when there are so many good things happen, happening, mm -hmm. uh, coalescing around really good and godly leaders who are trying to lead faithfully, how do we understand that if this is a movement and historically movements rise and fall, what do we do to help perpetuate that in a positive way without just acknowledging well, it's inevitably going to evaporate soon, so let's just try to ride that horse as long as it lasts. I think one of the things is just to avoid the temptation toward triumphalism. And I think in our Young, Restless, and Reform movement, there's been a lot of things that have been tempting. I mean, just the fact that Time Magazine and mm -hmm. Christian Science Monitor have profiled new Calvinism, quote-unquote, mm -hmm. as this new big thing coming down the pike. It just being somewhat of an insider is sort of amusing to see them pick up on that mm -hmm. because it's not like it's dominating evangelicalism. Sure. Mm -hmm. But I think avoiding that triumphalistic, um, you know, we are the ones we've been waiting for sort of <laughs> mentality is, is really key. And, and just building everything back upon Scripture so that whatever person we're naturally most helped by, whatever figurehead there is in our mini streams within this mini stream mm -hmm. that we're testing it by scripture. I think one of the things us as younger guys have to learn how to do is to think critically about what we're hearing from these guys who are mm. really modern day heroes in the faith mm. without having a critical sure. spirit and without saying yeah. here we're we're the young guys and we, we see it correctly and you guys just are, you know, you're passe, you're, you don't get it. Sure. How to balance those two things I think is really crucial for the sustainability of a movement. But ultimately, we want to be about the movement of God and right. not about right. some uh, sociological, demographical mm -hmm. movement. And even God's though, not in it, right? right. And even though human movements rise and fall, God is faithful throughout, yeah. and we understand that He is building His church. This is His promise right. uh, to us that we can stand on from Scripture. Well, and God has always used charismatic leaders and gifted teachers in um, the formation of His people mm -hmm. and the, yeah. the upbuilding of His church. So this is something that's always happened. It's just part of the way the world works, the way God has structured the world that leaders rise and people follow mm -hmm. them and, and um, we see that in the scripture and it's it's also the case in church history i mean as, as yeah. has already been alluded to 
you know, mm -hmm. if you look specifically at something like um, the reformed movement, I mean, we think of these major personalities, Martin mm -hmm. Luther, John Calvin, yeah. Jonathan Edwards, uh, Spurgeon, Lloyd-Jones, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. were used in right. their time to lead many to the riches of scripture and, and the gospel. And so mm -hmm. this, is a, this is just kind of the way the world works. Yeah. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it does seem like you can do it poorly or you can do it well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you, can, you can really build a movement based on your own name and reputation. Um, and that tends mm -hmm. to die with time, as, as you've said mm -hmm. already. Um, you know, you have your 30, 40 years in the sun, and then the lights go out, and that's kind of it, and everything kind of crumbles, and your parachurch mm -hmm. ministries die, and it's just kind of awkward. But then somebody else... We, I think a good question to ask you guys is, can, can we kind of work within this natural way of the world, you know, where mm -hmm. leaders rise up and are charismatic and people follow <clears> them, without having this kind of crash and burn effect of yeah. I'm, my ministry is fading and everything's just going kaput yeah. and somebody else does, has to pick up the pieces. Yeah. And that's a, that's a difficult question, one that I've thought about a lot in the context of the local church because we think about some of these, um, I mean, I had one person tell me, I don't believe in Reformed theology because after all, look at Northampton and how that ended up, how it is today after Jonathan Edwards. Mm. I think that's a very odd argument, yet it does seem to speak to one element of frustration in how these things last. And it also speaks to, when we think about these great and godly pastors right now, we wonder, what's the transition going to look like? And I think we're justifiably concerned because the track record mm. isn't so great. I think one issue is to think in terms of leadership biblically according to a plurality of elders. That's one thing we see of trying to share as much as we can the burden of leading in our churches among many, even though someone may be particularly gifted um, in teaching, may be particularly gifted at a specific point in time, to understand that that leadership is best exercised in the context of many leaders living according to God's call mm. in their lives. That's good. And I think another point which is complementary to that is the the future of the kingdom on earth is in the local church mm -hmm. and that it's not about who's the next big author that's coming or who's sure, the right. next big conference speaker or the next video that's going to go viral on YouTube mm -hmm. or, or Vimeo, um, but rather the ordinary work, which is extraordinary work, really, right. but it's the ordinary mm -hmm. day in, day out work of pastors, mm -hmm. many, most of them in small churches. So right. mm -hmm. you right. look at the work of somebody like a Mark Dever, mm -hmm. who's, who's a conference speaker, he's an author, but really the heart and soul of his ministry is, is serving his church right. and training up young men right. to right. go out and serve other churches. And I think as long as that's the focus... Uh, that really bodes well for the future of Lebanese. That's true. Now, there is a tension, I see. I, don't, I, I think mm -hmm. you guys have probably picked this up as well. And you look, you look at some of the major leaders of, um, of Christians today, mm -hmm. and a lot of them, you know, uh, gain this kind of widening influence. Mm -hmm. They're in local churches. They're kind of pastor theologians, which mm -hmm. some of us are really excited about and even yeah. want to be maybe. But um, mm -hmm. so, so they, have this, they have this influence. And then things get so large and hard to manage, understandably, because right. God is blessing their ministry that they leave the pastorate and they right. go on to a speaking ministry or that sort of thing, writing ministry. And that's, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, it's a great thing. Yeah. But it can look like, or it can seem if you're a young guy, like the real action is in the kind of right. parachurch speaking, writing, yeah. that sort of thing. I don't yeah. think those, those people actually think that, but it can look like that. So you start with the local church, build it, maybe, God blesses it, in whatever ways, numerically or otherwise, and then jump. Yeah. Is, well, I think what, I can, what, what you, I understand some of the temptations because I think about, you know, when I'll go and I'll speak at conferences, it's often some people are there because they're interested in the topic and they're interested in, in hearing what I have to say. And maybe they've learned about me through something that I've written. And yet when I'm preaching in other places, the people there, they'll come up and it's always, thank you for your sermon, Pastor here are five ways that you can really improve next time. <laughs> it's just local church ministry is just not glamorous in that same right. way. And, um, and yet I really feel like 
there is something incredible and powerful that's happening in those moment, uh, moments because mm -hmm. that just can that's that's what's steady week after week after week. It's almost like the spirituality conferences can boost you up for a time, mm -hmm. and that may be very beneficial for the people who are attending. But ultimately, you go back and you have to find a way to trust God to help you through all of the mundane, ordinary moments and, uh, and trust him to be working in those times too. Right. So again, I understand the temptation to want to, uh, to you know, go where Launch you seem to get orbit. more acclaim and it's, uh, in some ways it seems to be a little bit just more rewarding. Yeah. yeah. This was a good conversation. I'm glad to be having it with you guys. So yeah. we'll, we'll pick it up another time. All right. Thanks, Justin.